guys, it's Fly Girl T. Welcome to episode two of the Fly Girl T show. Um, we have our special guest. Um, this episode is Mike Champion. He's a singer. He is hot. Japan tour, I think, is just done. Um, he's just released a new album. He does R&B, soul, and it's kind of funky as well. Um, hear all about it right next. Hey, what up? We got Mike Champion in the building. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Hi, girl T. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. So tell me, look, we've known each other for like ages. Forever, man. Forever. Yeah, Usually yeah. at the clubs, I'll be DJing, you'll be on the mic, yeah, yeah. hyping up the crowd. <laughs> so now I hear that you're like full killing it in, in Japan. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. going worldwide. <laughs> tell me, how, how did that happen? Going from like the club scene to like touring around the world oh man i just always been you know between doing the club things i've always been doing my original music and, and, and sticking to that because that's my number one thing it's, it's my passion you know more than anything so i've always just made sure that i maintain that life and that that side of things as well as being in the club so mm. you know now I've, i released another album and and when i had released my first album i ended up getting like a licensing deal in japan so, oh wow uh, so I went out to Japan with the first album and did things over there and now I'm back with a new album so I'm back out there just doing my thing and, and the music, I don't know, the, the music just seems to travel, you know, like throughout the world, well, did the you, internet man, you know? I know, I know, but I mean like, so what was your strategy? You just like, like, okay, to, to everyone else who doesn't know how the business works, mm -hmm. so when you put out an album, tell me the process, what like, you, you you pick the favorite songs you might make like a hundred or something yeah, out of the yeah. work yeah man you you go through i mean personally when i make albums i don't really like record a whole lot of songs i just record i just kind of know what vibe i'm going for with the album okay and so then i stick to like let me write songs that are fitting that formula and, and that vibe so I, I don't really end up i might end up with maybe three or four songs that are cut from the album but yeah you know i like to just work on an album like it's a project so you know I'm really gonna think about what I'm I'm doing as yeah. far as the music goes before I do it you know yeah so yeah I, know, I just I, you know I recorded with this album I, I probably recorded 13 songs and there's 10 songs on this album and 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 what you, vibe you know, were you going for it's 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 really on like a R&B soul funk kind of vibe this, yeah. this new project yeah nice. yeah yeah so that's cool. So what's um? So you've been around the world, but what's the like? What's the craziest thing that you've seen that we don't have here, or that you're like, what? <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I've been I've been in quite a few places, you know. And Australia, like I feel like we are we've come a long way. Like with the music industry, I feel like we've come a long mm. way. Whereas why I say that is, you know, when I started doing music, I don't feel like people were supporting. Yeah independence as much as they are now yeah and so like independent music is it's like a lot of my friends you know i'm still independent here in australia and and a lot of my friends that are independent as well are like doing big things you know yeah. all over the world yeah and and they're pulling big crowds here in australia to their shows just being independent and 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 working it from home you know not not going through big big labels and stuff and yeah i feel like you know that that's that's dope. Like that's where we need to be yeah. with music. Yeah, you know, I think. You do you know? think that's got a, a lot to do with the internet though? Because now everyone's more accessible. People have more choice. Yeah, most definitely. They can discover people through YouTube, through Spotify, and stuff like that. Most definitely, the internet is is playing a huge part in that. You know, but it's also what you're doing on the internet is is, you know, because you can reach people, but you you still gotta have something have some thought in what you're doing and have some kind of quality behind it. What do you mean you thought know? in what you're doing? Just as in, you know, like putting, out, putting, putting something out there that, you know, people are, are going to be attracted to somehow because, you know, the internet is the, it's all about sharing, you yeah. share stuff and, yeah. and, and if someone's, if, if, if it starts popping off on the internet, then everyone wants to share it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I feel like, yeah, you got to have some thought in what you're putting out there because there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet, you yeah, know, like to set yourself everyone's apart. trying to make it on the internet, you know. Yeah. So your album, mm -hmm. what's the name of this album? It's called Experience. Experience. Yeah. Ah, so it's, it's 
pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> 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 it means a few things, but, you know. Yeah, it's kind of self-explanatory. You yeah. Know? Yeah. What's um What's an experience that you've been through um, where you might have had to overcome something, and then that made you stronger for it? Um, uh, that man, there'd probably be a lot of things. There's a, there's a lot of things that I've probably battled in life that I'm just like, I don't speak about, you know, and I probably sp I speak about it through my music mm. without being direct and people probably w wouldn't pick up on it unless I speak about it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, like I, being an artist, I think uh, anxiety is like a big thing that yeah. any artist, you know, like, uh, you know, would probably go through at some point in their career, some point in their life, just because, you know, you're, you're, you're really, you know, as, a, as an artist, you're really putting yourself out there. You yeah. know, you're really giving of, of your inner self, you know, through your work. Mm. And when it's not received a certain way or the way you're hoping it to be received, then you can really start like doubting yourself and you mm. can really get, you know, you can really come down hard on yourself like you're not good enough or, yeah. you know, and, and I'm not going to lie, like I've been through patches of like anxiety and high anxiety where I'm just like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, I, I think about, am I good enough to do this? Should I keep on doing it? Yeah. Maybe I should do something else, you so know? So what, what happens in those times? How do you get yourself uh, up, up out of the ditch? I really just write, like, I, I just meditate. I kind of like just go back to reminding myself, like, why, why I'm doing it, why I'm doing music, uh, you know, why I love it. I, 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 tr I always try and go back and find my love for it and 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 you know that happy the happy place that it brings me to yeah and I remember that and when I remember that then I'm like okay I know I'm supposed to be doing this yeah you know and yeah, and yeah. that is just I'll either write about it I'll write about it in my songs I've got a song that I written or I wrote on this new album called Sweet Life and and I wrote this song I, I'm a, I'm gonna like recite like yeah the song starts with a poem and I had originally just wrote the poem. And, and I posted it on my like uh, Instagram, like I, you know, or yeah, Facebook, yeah. my Facebook. So it was like, I posted it as a status, but it was just came to my mind. So I wrote this poem and I posted it as a status and I kind of put it out there just, it was, it was kind of like I was speaking to myself, but I put it out there in a way that, you know, people would read it and if they were feeling the same thing, then mm. they might get something from it. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it goes like this, it goes, you're a nobody until you're somebody. And when you're somebody, you live in fear of becoming a nobody again. Mm. So quit trying to be a somebody in fear of being a nobody because there's nobody that can ever be that somebody mm. and that somebody is you. Nice. So, so I wrote this, just it, so the meaning of it is, you know, like there's nobody that can be you. Yeah. You know, so don't be, don't, don't, don't be scared of that. Yeah, and don't, don't have fear of like what looking on Facebook and Instagram and seeing what everyone's doing mm. and try and become that. Just be yourself, you know? Yeah, that's deep. No, like, no, like for real. Thank you for sharing that because there's a lot of people and it's like a taboo subject. Or you know what's the phrase? Man up and like. Almost definitely. That's you know? like. Uh, but it's good to ha hear someone else go through it and say, you know what? It's okay to be human. Almost it's okay. definitely. What's your favorite song on this album? Uh, I, I'd say Sweet Life is probably one of my favorite songs just because it, it's probably a song that helped me get through, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, I got a couple. There's a song called Something For You that, you know, it's, it's kind of got that old school, like 2000s vibe to it and, and it reminds me of that time. So, you know, I love that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you said um, that, you know, when you experience those self-doubt times mm -hmm. and um, that you think of your happy place. Yeah. So is there, can you give us insight, what, what, describe what your happy place feels like or like? Man, just like the sun in my face, like this light in my face. <laughs> 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 you know, being with my family, definitely, de definitely being with my family and, and just, you know, not, not you know, ha being being out of mind as far as as my career and like what I got to do in life mm. and what I got to do to make money, like being not thinking of all that stuff, mm. and just you know being in the moment with people that I love the most, I guess is is probably my hap happiest place. Yeah. 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 Do you have a ritual before you go on stage to like you know calm down your nerves or to like psych yourself up? 
Yeah, and no, I, I try to like collect myself, but I, I mean, I get hyped before I go out on stage. I don't know why, I just, I, cause I get excited to go out on stage. That's that's what it is. So you know, I always definitely would say a prayer and just, you know, ask the man upstairs look uh, look out for me, look uh, look out for my band and whoever's on stage with me. And I and you know, I always give thanks just to be in that moment and mm. and give thanks for the talent that he's given me. And I just want to use it, you know in the way it's intended to be used. So. Thank you so much for coming down. Ah, no doubt, man. Thank you for having me. Man. I'm, I'm appreciative of these moments. Mike Champion, everyone. If you want to hear his music, where do they go? Spotify? It's everywhere. Just Google it. Spotify, uh, iTunes, Apple Music. It's everywhere. You can get it. Add him on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. Everything. Follow me on the socials. Man, I'm doing shows. Like, I'm touring at the moment. So, you know, if you want to come and catch a live show, I suggest you do. A champion. <laughs> a champion. Young boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike Champion, for coming to the show. Uh, next up, we've got our next segment. Let's talk about it. This is where you get to have your say about what we're talking about. <laughs> so have your say. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions um, coming up next. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Chris Jones. Jones. Yeah. So what's first on the agenda? Two? First on the agenda. Hey, I kind of want to talk about... <laughs> Who watched that sh the, the movie? Did you watch the movie Crazy Rich Asians? No. I've never... I've, I mean, I've heard about the wave of like how it's oh like... Man. It's the Black Panther of the I Asians. Know. I was like, that's what I said. <laughs> I went to my and brother, hey, this is like... You know, but I mean, Asians are always had the like Bruce Lee stuff. <laughs> you know, but this is, this this is, is the like Black cool Panther of it. Yeah, it's the rom-com, the, the famous Asian yeah. rom-com. Yeah. Um, but it's really good. I really liked it. Um, yeah, it is a rom-com, so it's not something that, you know, usually... Um, but a lot of... I don't know. Are you going to watch it? Well, I'm in <laughs> I don't want to give you a spoiler. I'm in an interracial relationship. So yeah. we're both not Asian. So, I mean, like, she's not Asian. I'm Asian. So there was less chance of me watching it. But you know why it place. relates? No, you know why it relates? It's because it addresses, you know, the judgmental parent. Oh yeah, yeah. So you don't have to be Asian to watch it. You have to be crazy or rich to watch it. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> is that a stereotype? Is that true that Asians have a stereotype of being crazy? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Every time like one of Once my mates, if they have an Asian girlfriend or like an Asian ex-girlfriend, they'd be like, yeah, they're one of the crazy Asians. <laughs> that's why they broke up. So that's, kind of, that's I think it's the kind of thing that... Um, that's like Latinas are like stereotyped as crazy hothead. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So but they, they don't want to go too stereotypical and call it like crazy smart Asians or smart rich Asians. <laughs> that would be, so, That'd be, too that would be a nose, boring you know? show to watch. <laughs> That'd be too on the nose. But I think crazy rich Asians was kind of like the right balance. Yeah, no, that was good because there are like Asians. I really, really, really want to watch um, poor dumb Asians though. Poor dumb Asians. I want to see how that show goes. I uh, really think it would be know. like a hit. Oh, yeah. If they already made their Black Panther, it's time to Because Asians like, love slapstick other. comedy. Yeah. So <laughs> it could like work. <laughs> it could work. But I mean, it was really cool seeing stuff that you don't get to see in everyday life, like those like mega mansions and yeah. the, all but that. But the real question is was the movie a good movie? Yeah, I liked or it. I mean, it's kind of. It's a bad movie. I've heard, I heard mixed corny. reviews of it. Yeah, it's like corny. It's if you're, good. If you're, I think if you're going in for like a corny movie, in for like a typical rom-com but yeah it's a rom-com yeah so like then this is the one for you you know and what it's kind of like it's kind of like asian cinderella almost asian you, cinderella. like modern asian cinderella yeah yeah and um but yeah she's yeah she's good i like i, I don't know i kind of liked it <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend liked it too he was he was all right and then someone else pointed trying, out i'm not is trying to make you defend <laughs> the movie if you like it you like it <laughs> wait is it true but because we went to dinner last night yeah. and um uh my friend's man was saying oh of course he liked it he just wanted some nookie is it true that boys only watch rom-coms because they want you know to get brownie points for later yeah <laughs> it is especially if they're watching it at home yeah, especially when the mood is set and they're in the room. Oh, because the girls are like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh it's it's like pretty much, oh. it's pretty much like setting the time. mood, making guys comfortable, and you know, because like you need to get the mood right and the rom com. You're not gonna get anything by watching um, a drama about you know murder and <laughs> psychological thrillers and stuff. That's not gonna set the mood. 
It's like how can, like candlelight. Yeah, that's true. It's like candlelight wine, champagne, rom com, pop -com rom com. I never knew that. I was no. like gullible after all this time. I thought like, hey, you know, yeah, guys like rom coms too. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> nah. Right. At least I got insider information. <laughs> nah. <laughs> well, I, I'm not gonna speak for all guys. I'm gonna say like, some guys do. I mean, most guys do like watch it with their girlfriend just for that reason. Uh -huh. But mo other guys could probably just like it because they just like the storyline of... Yeah, um, like feel-good moments. Yeah. I mean, you know. Anyway, big shout out to <laughs> Frank for tuning in. What up? Fifi, what up Fifi? How are you? And Lawrence. Hey, I... Ooh. I sense the next follow-up will follow. <laughs> so he tuned into episode one. Yeah. <laughs> so um, who's your favorite Asian celebrity? I want to oh, know. Asian celebrity. Bruce Lee's pretty cool. Oh, you say I gotta say Jackie Chan. Oh yeah, no, Jackie Chan's Jackie cool. Chan. I like funny. Yeah. Um, Jackie Chan's cool. Um, oh, the Ken. Uh, what's his name? Not Ken, Ken Jeong. That's that's oh, a yeah. politician. He's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 like, no, you're talking about that. Um, I'm talking about the funny guy. Not Kim, Kim Jong. Oh, yeah, not no, no, Kim no, Jong. Ken, Ken. 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 Yeah, 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 I thought I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the guy from. Um, he's from Fresh Off the Boat guy. Yeah, Is yeah. He? and he's from, yeah, yeah, he's the dad of Fresh Off the Boat, who's also, also the same guy who's in. Um, oh. I thought you were talking about the guy from Hangover. Yes, it's the same guy. He's not the guy, it's the same, the dad in Fresh Off the Boat. That's a completely different person. Oh, no, okay, wrong movie. So no, there's another series. <laughs> Are you saying that there's Asians look like? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just forgot the, the name of the other series. There's Fresh Off the Boat and then there's another one. Do you, yeah, Bruno Mars is part Asian too. He's part Filipino. The thing Filipino. about Filipinos is like, if you find, if they if we find a celebrity that has like, I don't know, like a hundredth Filipino in them, <laughs> we're going to claim them as our own. That's the Filipino way. We need Filipino to claim it. Filipino way. You know, we've got the guy from Black Eyed Peas. And we've got Manny Pacquiao. What, is, is he half? No, he's, no, he's full. full. He's but like, full. You know, we claim him. And then we claim um, Bruno Mars, who's half Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Lawrence says his favourite Asian is um, Jay Chow. Oh, yeah, Jay Chow, the singer. Yeah, he's cool. I don't know what he's saying because he's Chinese. But, yeah, Jay Chow. Oh, hey, shout out to Pete um, for joining in. Um, oh, shout out to Look Lookman was joining in. Hey, Lucky. Um... Wait, so wait, let's go back to Bruno Mars because he performed in, in Australia earlier this year. Yeah. Far out. Did you go to his concert? That yeah, was I went so to his good. concert. Yeah. Uh, that was like so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So production value. Like, so when usually when hip hop or R&B artists come in, they kind of like run around on stage, go left, go the right. And then I still the like DJ. that. Like, to be honest, I, li I, I still like yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Format. But when you compare, <laughs> Bruno Mars is like on a whole different <laughs> other level. Yeah. It's uh, like production value, I was like, oh my god. But you're not gonna get a dancing hip hop art. Oh, you probably will nowadays, but like, you won't get it. Could, if they made effort. It's like they no, don't even that, make an effort. That's the whole swag of it. It's like, we don't need to make an effort. Yeah, but it's All I gotta enough. do is me and a mic. You know, Jay Z, when he came in, came to Australia back in like 2005. Yeah. In the, I think it was the Rock the Block tour with Rihanna and um, yeah, yeah. Neo. Yeah. Like, that was when Neo was a great performer, Rihanna was a great was. performer. <laughs> Yeah, still is. Oh, I haven't seen his latest stuff. But uh, like, yeah. And then Jay Z, all he did was just walk back and forth. He, he had the palm, like the crowd in the palm of his hand. Yes. And there's a, some some sort of swagger about it. Like he doesn't need to dance. He just needs to be on stage, rap, move one side, move to the next side, go to the center, move one side. <laughs> but it's kind of like, it. yeah, okay, fair enough. But it's like. At least, you know, if you care about your audience, put in some effort for us to look at stuff. Like, I went to the Pink concert the yeah. other week, um, and it was amazeballs too. Like, I thought Bruno Mars was on a different level. Bruno gave us, like, those lights and all. You know how, like... And then again... And the, the levels, you know, like, the NSYNC days I'm where, not, like... I'm just trying to be devil, <laughs> devil's advocate. I'm just saying that... Um, how about Ed Sheeran? He's, he doesn't have all that, all that stuff. No, because... Him in front of the mic. And his guitar by himself. It's like him and Adele though. They because they're they lower voice. key. Like let, they're like more chill. So it really depends on like, the artist. It depends on the vibe. The vibes. Because like Bruno Mars has party vibe. It'd be weird if he was just like. Oh, but then down. again, when he was doing the sitting down for uh, Versace on the floor. Yeah. That was yeah. Good. See. That was still good. Yeah. 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 Still. So good. there's always a time for 
But the just, lights. I'm yeah. just saying, any outers, if you happen to I'm talk just being to the any... other side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> this one's just trouble me. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, give us a show. I love it. Um, so Pink, she was like flying all over the place, going from one yeah, stage to the next. Yeah, she does all the, the circus act stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she was really Apparently good. she does like 100 shows in Australia all the time. Yeah, she's. Mm. I swear, she's way more she's famous probably, in Australia. Yeah. We love her. Mm. Like, just because I reckon she's like, I don't give a F. She's kind of that vibe yeah, in yeah. Australia. You know, I like, I wish, oh, I really want to see Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder mm. would be really good. Yeah, that'd be good too. Stevie Wonder, I think he's like, while he's still alive. While he's still alive, because yeah. like, he's probably one of the last of his kind. Yeah, yeah. I know, his talent is amazing. Um, Whitney Houston, I don't, I'm glad I didn't see her last because I think I heard bad reviews. Because mm. there's only so much, you know. You can take with your Yeah, voice. especially if she did so much drugs. Oh, speaking of artists and drugs, um, <laughs> I, love, I love your segue game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your segue game is on point. Well, it just reminded me. <laughs> um, this is how I think in real life. Um, Mac Miller. So rest in peace, Mac Miller. Um, yes, rest in peace. He wasn't like a fully commercial artist, but I did like listen to his stuff online, and like yeah. it was really good. I could relate to some of the stuff that he said. Not that I know every word for word, but I really did respect him. Um, it's crazy how much love he got when yeah. he passed away. Like, like all these people are talking really highly of him yeah. as a great person. Like, it's you like, wouldn't why recognize they support that, like, him? Like, yeah, you wouldn't before. recognize that like before, but like, um, but yeah, like he seems to be a really genuine, nice person mm. after all the the responses that he, to his death. And I'm like, wow, like I didn't, you didn't expect that much love. I'm really, um, I don't know, there's some conspiracy theories. No, my God. You're just coming in with the conspiracy theories. <laughs> but serious, like, cause, cause what? This is a public, like a public, how do you say Publicity science. No, no, it's not. He's not. He's, not. He's, not. he's like, I reckon. <laughs> he's still reckon alive. He's still fucked. Two bucks still alive. He's still fucked in Cuba, apparently. <laughs> um, no, but Mac Miller, I don't, I don't think he is, but, um, Mac Miller apparently died of a drug overdose, right? Mm. Um, but there's a theory because don't you reckon okay it's just all too convenient that celebrities die of overdoses but there's some like like who uh, the guy from lincoln park chester Bennington. chester beddingfield um he or, or bennington oh bennington sorry um and then his mate in the other band mm. what's his name you know who i'm talking about um they both died within um roughly a short amount of time yeah. within a year right mm. um and both of them happen to um either it's either like they die of an overdose or um suicide or something mm. but there were rumors that they were going to expose the hollywood pedophile ring mm. and then so you know conveniently because when chester died he had just bought a house was looking forward to life theoretically it didn't make any sense no one in his family or anyone so that i read um was what is this pedophile ring had speaking it of? You, you know you haven't heard of the pedophile ring no oh, because like you know before someone says it they'll die so you better be careful <laughs> joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't worry, man. I'm not that crazy rich or anything. Crazy rich. No, so I'm going to out Asian. everyone. And, um, so I'm basically, the in the Hollywood, um, to make it in Hollywood, apparently, um, there's like a super elite group of people. The Illuminati. Well, I don't know if they're Illuminati, but, but they may, Illuminati -esque. might be. Illuminati esque. But yeah, yeah, so they're elite, but um, apparently they're part of like this pedophile ring. And then so they get, cause don't you notice they get all the Disney kids when they're young? And mm. then like they make some famous, right? Mm. Um, and so, I don't know, like there's this, all this conspiracy, you gotta read up on it, just <laughs> YouTube it, I'm not very good with facts. Brink. And then someone said that Anthony Bourdain also was gonna, ex was about to expose oh this God. like, um, no, this secret chamber he found somewhere in the mm. desert um, that would, he were hiding Potter? kids, that were hiding okay. kids, mm. right? Because he's a, he's a journalist. Mm. And so, of course, he's gonna like bring it out. But I think that was also linked to the pedophile ring. Um, but Mac Miller, I'm not sure if he was involved, but he was um, dating Ariana Grande. Do you reckon he went on a like, you know, drug bender because he was depressed? No, the, the, the most disgusting thing was the trolling of Ariana Grande after the death of Mac Miller. Yeah. Like, um, you no, know, me being a nosy person, I was like, oh, I wonder what I'm Ari Grande person. wanted to have to say about this. So I went on her Instagram and then I saw her, her last post and then you see the comments. 
Oh, really? Vicious comments. Really? What yeah, there was like hashtag MacKilla, and there was hashtag you did this, all this stuff. Right. You know, all this what? Stuff. They're gonna drive her to suicide? Yeah, too? I'm like, oh my gosh, how much can you take? I'm like, but she disabled her comments, and she hasn't, oh, smart she hasn't girl. enabled them since. So, but she yeah. has posted. I've been keep. Uh, I'm giving uh, everyone their update on the, on her Instagram page. <laughs> She's um. Posted a couple of photos of Mac Miller and did her piece saying, you know. Yeah, and they were like, they went out. Of course, they're going to be close. They went out for like two years or something like that. Shout out to Missy. Shout out to Tua. Um, Lucky. He said um, his all-time favorite Stevie Wonder concert. Oh, you're lucky. And B.O.B. Um, Lawrence says. B.O.B. would be a good conversation for all the conspiracy theories that you have. Because what do you mean? He, he's the one who's like, he's into the, all that stuff. He's saying the oh, earth really? is flat and everything. So the earth is not flat, B.O.B. Yeah, yeah, but you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he's into that stuff. So, <laughs> right, moving on. Um, Lawrence um, says, Khalees gets into it when she's performing. Oh, especially when she performs Bounce. Khalees. Mm. Um, Nas is X, of course. Um, Tua. Tua says Justin Timberlake Ooh, was really good. That's I need to see Justin call. Timberlake too. That's a good call. Um, oh, he's he's more into that. acting now. Yeah, but like he's one of those um, people who just come back every six years. <laughs> he's like, I need to make some money. I don't know about Bam, his last Justin. album, but like his other albums, boom. Well, he should have because now he's got a new album. Right? Yeah, 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 but so, I don't know about that. As in, like, yeah, it's an alright one. All right, keep moving on. <laughs> um, Joshua says um, Miller is the man. Rest in peace. Yeah, Joshua. Um, Lawrence says the saddest was Avicii this year passed away. That's right, Avicii. That I think that was. That was pretty shocking too. Like, yeah. he was at a, that peak of his career. Hands down, that was not a conspiracy. Yeah. That was like run down to the max because when you're touring everyone goes oh i want to be this famous artist but what but if he was fine <laughs> he was not <laughs> exposing I, don't think, the ring. I don't i didn't read anything about avicii exposing the pedophile ring but um <laughs> that's a big statement that's funny when you look at um when you look at tour life tour life what they do is they get you on a red eye plane um to the next city then you stay up all night you have to go to after parties then you have to go on the red eye morning plane 6 a.m fly to another city so if you're and if you're drinking on top his liver must have been like dying or something Plus, you never know like these artists as in like all these artists who do all these tours they could have stage fright and the only thing that could stop them from being afraid on stage yeah, is drugs is or alcohol, alcohol. You know, yeah, other stuff. How yeah. long can you do that? Yeah, no, it'll, without it'll catch up. Without having a toll on your body, right? It will catch up. So, um, yeah, Avicii, that was really sad. Um, and I think he wanted to quit for a long time, but his manager kept on pressuring him. No, because, you know, it's money for him, right? Mm. But people are more than money. Yeah. So rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, Avicii. Um, Lawrence says, Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park. No. No, he didn't die. He didn't die. <laughs> His other yeah. friend from the other band. Ah, where's Michael when you need him? Um, um, Fifi says, wow, shocking news. Yes. Um, okay, let's see. And that was the response from the last so video. So we were having, we were like, why isn't anyone interacting? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you were interacting and I did a boo-boo. Whoops. Thank you so much for tuning in to the second episode of the Fly Girl Tea Show podcast. <laughs> Make sure you join us and subscribe on YouTube slash DJ FlyGirlT, Facebook, follow us, um, and Instagram. <sighs> I want to interact more with you guys. So if you're subscribed, we'll let you know when our live interactions happen and then you can have your say in our very own live, have your own shout outs, etc. Um, I guess I'll see you on the next episode. Peace out.